Guys, I have been thinking, obviously I did Who the Hell Is last year, but I would love to do another series. But I don't want to be alone this time. I need a companion. So should we ask Chris Calling? Hey, hey girl. Hey, what brings you here? Chris. Yeah. Do you love me and Tiffany? Yeah. Do you want to do a YouTube series, Tiffy Talks? What's in it for me, though? Ooh. Okay, girl bops, wine, and Matty Jordan. I mean, you had me at wine. Of course I will. Of course I will. Guys, welcome to Tiffany Talks. This is the first episode of our YouTube series, and we are bringing this to you for the 2025 season. We just want to get you all involved, and we're going to be including all sorts of fun games, fun talks with Eurovision guests, artists, um, other content creators, and let's just see where it goes. Let us know in the comments who else you would love to see on the pod. Once a month, we're going to be bringing you content with Eurovision artists getting us all prepped for the 2025 season. So are you excited, Luke? I am so excited, are you? Yeah, I am buzzing. But Chris, Chris, I'm sorry. Can you hear that? Oh, oh, I can hear like a little tune. Oh my God, I think it's our first guest. Is it our first guest? Should yes. we dive into it? Let's go. Woo. Yes. And our first guest. She may have come last in the semi-final of your vision, but she is still an icon in our eyes. It's Miss Sarah Bonici. Hello, hello. Hey, girl. How are you? I'm okay, thank you. How are you? Good. And how's Tiffany? Are... Oh, she's alive still. She's here. Hi, Tiffany. She misses you. Oh, I miss her too. <laughs> It literally seems like yesterday we were speaking to you in that press room. Like, yes, oh, we absolutely love speaking to you, and your team were so amazing. And especially your stylist, Jean Dor, he played a big part in that interview. <laughs> so, yeah, it was so amazing. But obviously, that Eurovision week was such a whirlwind. How has life been since Eurovision? <laughs> well, as you very well said, um, the Eurovision week was quite hectic and quite challenging because obviously um, we had prepared for so long and then we had to like give the performance, which required a lot of training and all of that. So it was it was a lot. And Eurovision itself is quite, quite intense. You have a lot of press and all of that. But it was such a beautiful experience and it has given me so much. Um, after Eurovision, even after I'm still like receiving uh, comments, views on the on the performance are still going up. People are still <laughs> commenting that Malta was robbed. Um, uh, and, and I had like such great feedback about the performance. I mean... It's been it, it, it's been insane, honestly, and I am so so grateful and and like so proud of everything we managed to achieve as a team, even though we were quite a small team and quite a small country. Um, so I will forever be grateful for the whole experience. And yeah, it's been it's been great so far. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. honestly, what you managed to turn out on that stage, it was one of like. I, I think it was what we were always hoping. We were like, this okay. is a girl bop. Like, me and Luke, we have a soft spot for girl bops at Eurovision. We do. And we, listening to your song, Luke, it was like, right, we got the revamp. We were like, she just needs to bring it to the stage. And, like, you have the dancers. You have, you had everything. And when we saw that first rehearsal, we were like, yes. Oh. <laughs> so, I honestly don't, I don't think anyone was more disappointed than us too when you didn't make it to the <laughs> I mean I still people to this day like when they see me in Malta and still people as well message me saying that they were so disappointed like it's funny though because I think I'm the most like person that sort of took it slightly yeah <laughs> I was so, way, and I, I genuinely keep on saying this, this because that is exactly what I felt. 
I was so happy with the whole performance straight after the performance. I mean, I felt that what we had worked for for all those months, you know, came to life and I was satisfied with the performance. And believe me, I rarely am satisfied, <laughs> but I was genuinely satisfied. I mean, so many things could have gone wrong and I th- didn't, you know, <laughs> and, and I was so happy that for me, that that was all that mattered at that point. Obviously, making it true, you know, I, those are all great things. But uh, for me, that wasn't the most important thing. You know, I I I. I seek happiness from the things that I can control. That's how, what I always like to say. And I could control the performance and I was happy with the performance. No one can control the result. And we all know how um, hard it is really for, for countries, small countries like, like yeah. Malta as well. So um, I honestly, I mean, I think I, t- I took it quite, quite lightly, sort of, the fact that we didn't make it, make it through. And, uh, and I mean, you know, there's just, just the result. It's so, just yeah. the way it goes. Yeah. Oh, we want to know. Was there any point when you got the results? Were you like, like, was there any point? No. No, if I were to be completely honest, at that point, I, I was like, you know what? It's okay. I'm happy with the performance. The day after, when I woke up, first of all, I woke up feeling like very grateful, like with my heart, like really, really full. Because I, I said, oh, my God, we did it. We managed to do it. I was always like, you know, you always up until you do it and it happens. You're always like, what if something goes wrong? You know, and the day after I felt like, oh, my God, we did it. I'm proud of what we did. And I can watch the performance in five, ten years time, whenever, and, and still feel proud. Of it's it. always going to be that. For me, that's what really matters. Yeah. And I felt that. What I did feel, though... A few hours later, as the day went by, I was like, uh, I mean, we could have, you know, gotten the opportunity to perform again and, and I will not perform again. So sort of that bittersweet feeling that, you know, you, I could have had that opportunity to perform again. And, you know, the potential um, and, you know, the exposure that you can get from performing in the finals is way bigger, you know, than the semifinals. So for me, that is the only sort of... Um, not positive let's put it that way feeling that i got sort of slight regret mm. if i if i may say but then again still for me the fact that i managed to give a performance which i'm proud of only like point where i was like uh i you know that sort of feeling but not not, not anger or you know or just the, or just sadness in any way honestly like I, I, yeah. yeah absolutely i think like with that as well like you gave the performance of your life in that semi-final. And I think that some that did advance to the final, sometimes not just this year, but in any year, like they might not do as well in the final. And that can be disheartening as well. So yeah. it's like I say, everything you, happens for it, a reason. <laughs> yeah. But there's one, I'm like, I'm, ah, oh, Luke, sorry. oh, let me go, be a show on. Um, on. <laughs> I'm not sure if you were aware of this, but did you know the next day after the semi-final you caused was... a lot of speculation? I know. Because you announced that there was I a put big... myself into it. <laughs> big <laughs> announcement. And I was in the press centre at that time and everyone was on the phones, the laptops on your Instagram thinking you were going to announce you were in the final. Mate, everyone in the press centre was like, heads down, like, who is it? It's, it's gonna be Sarah Benici. She's gonna announce Guys, it. Guys, believe me, my Instagram like <laughs> blew up on the on the day. Everyone was like messaging me, <laughs> asking if I was going to be um, in the finals. They didn't know I came last. <laughs> That's <funny. laughs> they don't need, they don't need to know but that. yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, it wasn't that <laughs> obviously. Um, no, but like I say, you got nothing but to be proud of of Eurovision and like you say it's in the history books now so for you know for your children in the future if you have children they'll be able to watch it as well and it's just something that they'll be able to be proud of as well so it's amazing since Eurovision you've done a lot you've (laughs) got your brand new single Love You Like That Yes. Um, and with the music video coming soon I believe yes very 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 soon Ooh. I, we, yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> I'm so excited. And I couldn't help but notice you've also got your dancers from the Eurovision stage as well. Yes. <laughs> How is Matt doing? Is he okay? 
<laughs> you can go ask him. I think he's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so you've you've stayed in touch with all of them since though, and still working with them in the studio, or are they? Yes. How yes. did you get them all together in the first place? Because I know um, it's Christmas, isn't it? So they're from the UK, and I'm yeah. from Malta, so um, I didn't know them before. Basically, my creative director um, uh, got me in, in touch with the choreographer. He had worked with him several times before, um, with Michelle, my choreographer. Um, and Michelle basically reached out to, um, to the dancer. So that's how, you know, we got all together. And uh, yeah, I think they, they were quite... Uh, quite important in, in, in my performance. I think they were critical, actually. I think they elevated the performance quite, quite a lot. Um, it was obviously like a, a, a team effort. And then, yes, after Eurovision, we stayed in touch. I had some performances in Malta and they came over as well to perform with me, um, like I Love MTV. Yeah. And um, while they were here, we shot the music video for my brand new single, Love You Like That. And they so went it's been well. in the process, that video, for a long time, like a month yes. or two? Or, or three. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. I mean, straight, straight off of Eurovision, I started work, uh, straight off of Eurovision, I released Loose. Um, um, my other single, just like literally, obviously, when I announced it, all that thing yeah. which we just discussed um, and yes a few days later it was it was released um and then straight off Eurovision I started working on new music I had like a, a writer's block for some time I really couldn't like write and be creative like everything I was writing felt not good enough for Instagram yeah yes I actually spoke about it on Instagram um it's funny how sometimes you know we put so many unrealistic standards and expectations for ourselves and like coming off from your revision and all of that you'd feel like you you'd have sort of that that pressure you feel that sort of pressure on you sometimes we create that pressure ourselves mm -hmm. and and yes it was quite a challenge but then all of a sudden I met my producer Ed and yeah we like we met and we started working and the song came out came out of nowhere it's actually funny how how i wrote it because i started writing different melodies and i told that i told him listen can i go to the booth and i record these melodies to see if they actually sound right and with the production and all of that i said yes sure and i went in the booth i got a bit lost i started <laughs> singing random words and i went out and told me come out and it I went out and I told me you have your song written <laughs> and everything. I got I think my subconscious wrote, wrote the thing. So it was quite funny how it happened, you know. But sometimes you need to let go of all expectations and it just you know your creative being will will, will come out again and, and that's just, only normal after something like Eurovision as well. Yeah, I think it's it's normal and I think like as a person myself, I do tend to like put a bit of like pressure on me and set some unrealistic standards. But I think it's normal. I think it 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 it, it happens to a lot of people after the, mm. the thing as you know as as big, I must say, as Eurovision because you yeah. you'd feel honestly you'd feel that pressure to to sort of prove that you know you you can now do even better you know you cannot do less than what you already did i think it's in human nature we try to evolve and progress each and every day i must say so yeah. so, so let us say like as two big fans of you anyway like you're absolutely slaying and everything you've done since eurovision i've been like this girl knows what she's doing so you're doing all the right things and what what's up next i mean of course mm. you've got a music video coming out is there anything in the pipeline you're like oh i'm looking forward to that yeah, I mean, um, I wish. I mean, I'm an independent artist. I yeah. do so many things alone, which is quite the struggle sometimes. Mm. Um, so so yes, I I it takes time for me to do certain certain things. But yeah, I do have a lot of things in the pipeline and plans. Um, I'd be traveling and performing. Yes, I have some performances abroad. Um, <laughs> um, we'll be there with a banner at the front yes, <laughs> I'm sure you will <laughs> obviously um, uh, I'll be releasing more music so now with Love You Like That 
and I also like spoke about it on social media. I like closed my L era, I'm calling it. Um, I really I had loop, then I released loose, and now I, re I released and I will soon be releasing the music video of Love You Like That. So three songs with the letter L. So like metaphorically, I have these three L L word songs, I must yeah. say. Mm -hmm. like, even in terms of style of music, I wanted to like close this chapter, which started with Eurovision and sort of ending with Love You Like That. And I am now in a process of writing new music, music and like rediscovering myself, rediscovering new styles and like digging deeper into like my um my roots, I must say, and like mm. my initial influences, sort of. I feel like I'm in a place okay. where I can sort of, sort of do that. Obviously, I will still, you know, the style will still be yeah. in line. But um, I want to find find myself and release music, which is which is as true to myself and my artistic persona and my personality as much as possible, um, because I feel that when you're yourself and true to yourself like in your music people can connect and relate with that even more and they you know they get sort of they get it even yeah more. They, you know what i mean so that's where i'm at i'm writing i already started working on like i think i have a good potential oh, <laughs> yes. girl. oh. People working on it so yeah you know, by me and chris we have many unicorns all around the world and okay. we know a lot of rumors we get told a lot of things okay you need to either you can deny it because okay. you may have to <laughs> <laughs> were you seen at the Maltese eurovision um song racing camp in the summer i was seen yes hey! <laughs> <laughs> i mean I, I i wasn't taking part of the i i, I didn't take take part in the camp i um, I thought it was I could if I wanted to I thought it was a bit unfair I wanted to give obviously like chance to different people to experience it um, uh, but I was there because I attended the lectures um, uh, and I attended the lectures there and I met uh, some as well <laughs> fans mm. then while I was there it was it was quite fun and informative I must say oh so, I was very, very <laughs> professional I say yeah. Very yeah. true. I'm honest. <laughs> I'm not desperate. <laughs> Girl, you've paved the way for Malta now. It's just going to keep going up and up until you return again. So, <laughs> oh. <laughs> not for now. Maybe. Is <laughs> is there like a Maltese artist like that? If you could choose to follow you like next year, like to be the artist, who would it be? I don't know. I mean, there's so many talented people in Malta, and. Most of the artists are my friends, so I, I'm a bit biased. So I don't think there's anyone in particular. I think but many are deserving sort of to 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 be there. But I don't think, no, I, there's anyone professional here again. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think you'll have any involvement with Eurovision events next year, like any pre-parties or anything, if you got asked? Or is that well, if they ask me, I will, I will be very, very happy to 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 yes be involved oh. i do have one coming up i had to to do have one in germany coming up oh amazing i had to reject some because of other commitments so mm -hmm. yeah. you're busy and booked girl <laughs> <laughs> thankful <laughs> yeah so move on to a quick game yeah do you have your phone with you Sure do. Yeah. Oh, oh. I sent you uh, some pictures on Instagram. Okay. So, so have you might... heard of the game Toot or Boot? No. Because we know... We... Toot or Dare? Is it similar? No, no. <laughs> we know you're, uh, you like fashion, clearly. Mm. Fashion queen. Yes. Fashion queen. So what we have done is... Mm. We have chosen 10 pictures of outfits from this year's Eurovision season. Yes. And you have to confirm and say if it's a toot, which is like you like it, like it's a good look, or if it's a boot, which it could have improvements. Okay. All right, let's go. So the will you like say... Should yeah. I okay. So yeah. the first... One is this one is Colleen. 
Wink a lean. I t- toot or boot, right? Yes. It's definitely toot. I mean, again, I'm biased because she's very much like aligned with my style. So I will obviously like it, but definitely toot. I mean, and she she can like rock any outfit, to be honest. She mm. has an amazing she can wear a bin bag and pull it off. <laughs> Honestly, like she's insane. You guys can see her here. She's yeah, like, she's amazing. Her figure, her, her legs, everything. Is exactly. Legs for days. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's hot. Yes, definitely too. Now we have our British icon, British? Ollie. Yee! Ollie Alexander. Ollie Alexander. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Good I think they're really cool. They're super cool. I love the ribbed. It's all about uh, the trousers, isn't it? And even the trousers with the lace. It's it's. I actually never realized they had this written on it. You always learn something new. Did uh, they? They did. They did. They did. See. Oh yeah, of course. Oh. Yeah, there's Dizzy on the belt. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, is it? Oh yeah. Uh, the detail. Yeah, detail, girl. <laughs> love it. No, no, tooth for sure. Okay. Now we have our hosts, Malin and Petra. Well, <laughs> no, I actually like. I I think, I think it suits their sort of style. I must say, you know, it, it's like the very like macho. It's not something I would wear. You know what I mean? But I think it. They're great outfits for them. If you know what I mean. But so, do you think it's like? Do you think it's enough to be like the host? Like they're hosting your vision. Uh, I mean, you know what? I really do believe that if you need to be comfortable in what you're wearing, if they were comfortable, then I'm super happy for them because they <laughs> love it. I'd rather have them wear something like this and they're comfortable than wearing something which is not comfortable for them. And you know, we'd think it's too. So I say toot because I bet they were comfortable. They look comfortable and they're rocking their outfits. So toot. Okay. Now we have Isaac from the orange carpet. Yes. The turquoise carpet. Oh, turquoise. Sorry. You should know. Listen, I don't have my glasses. I'm blind. Okay. Okay. There's a difference between blind and color blind. (laughs) You can see <laughs> to cross all over. So, um, it's not something I would wear, to be honest. I think you'd look good in that, I'm not going to lie. You think so? Yeah. A girl that there's turquoise stripes, it's giving me Mediterranean realness. Well, it, it suits him, though. He looks colourful, I he guess. Had, yeah. He never gave, like, with his performance, I never thought he would be here in colour. Like, that's a yeah. shock. Yeah, but but it you know turquoise carpet is all about I well I guess it's it's not quite about just the song it's more yeah. about you know it, so it could be like his his way his sense of style expressing so, himself yeah yeah I think it suits him actually I think I think it's it's fun it's a fun outfit too yeah. are you trying to get the congenial award. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm just nice. Can I be nice? <laughs> no, I but, suppose. That's why. Well, no, but uh, honestly, I mean, I if 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 there's anything that I'm going to hate, I will say I hate it. Oh, I, I'm yeah, actually liking all of them. <laughs> this, okay, this next one, obvious, obvious. Eleni. I mean, two like two yeah. times. You could word out. I can imagine you in it. Well, and look at that good. I doubt, to be honest. Oh, she's, Whoa, she's like so tan and so skinny. Oh, yeah, I <laughs> so still... are you. Uh. <laughs> I don't feel that good. Honestly, like like she's insane. By the way, I think you can hear my dog barking. I heard well. a dog, but I also heard a bird as well. Yes. Oh. Yeah, we have you... a farm in the kitchen. I love it. Oh, my God. What's the bird called? The bird is called Sweetie, but he's not so <laughs> Sweetie because he's quiet all the time. Then the minute, the minute he, I'm on a call or something, and he hears the minute that, two gays are here. She's no, no, it could be anyone. Honestly, the minute um, it hears like a different voice, um, yeah, it's, oh, it's <laughs> he, 
it's a he, yeah. He goes crazy. <laughs> he wants to join in. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And <laughs> my dog. My dog is sweet, though. Yeah, where's, oh, what's your dog called? Lily. Lily. It's a King Charles. Very oh, British. Very British of you. Are you sure you're not British? Like, I feel like you are British. I think I... <laughs> Oh. Yeah, <laughs> deep down. I just came from London like a few days ago and I'm I'm yeah. planning another trip to London like in a few days. Let us know when you come over, we'll go out. Yes. <laughs> whenever, you, whenever I'm there, I'll message you and we can go out. Yes. Yes. Um, so where were we? We're here discussing. Yes. So it's a toot. Of course. Of course. Insane. Oh, now we have twins. Marcus and Martinez from Sweden. They're from so Sweden. nice. Yeah. They're so nice. And I like their style as well. Like in general, I think they're really cool. Yeah. Let's just say Tiffany likes them. Uh, oh. Is it just Tiffany that likes them? Oh, I like them too. I think they're my I age as do. well. <laughs> Not to be subtle about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I bet you do. They're, I mean, I like them too. I like them. Too. All their outfits in Malmo were slay. I don't know who. I mean, they didn't have Jean Thor, that's for sure. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure they had a great stylist yeah. on board because, yeah, all their outfits were incredible. And they, they're like, they're super sweet people. That's I am so kind. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, as a person, I, that's really like, influences like the way i see someone like their character and i think that they're you know they're they're lovely character and kind like character lovely self like shines through through them they're, they're yeah and that i forgot like outside of your vision they're like a big deal like my friend AI. yeah AI. my friend was obsessed with them on like musically before tiktok oh, and but- when i interviewed them she was like oh my god friends. and i was like what Yes, they're quite. They're quite a yeah, big deal. Even like before Eurovision. But you wouldn't know. Like they're so humble and sweet. Yes, yes, they are. They they honestly are. Yeah. Yeah, see, I'm feeling cold. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. When Nelly finished. Oh, is that a two? Was it a two? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. Of course. Now we have Luna from Luna, her performance. She's so she's sweet. I like her makeup. Yeah, her makeups. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I love it. Suits her. Um, I like the outfit. I'm not a, like the big. I mean, in terms of, I, I again, I think, I think with the song, and with everything, and the way she, she like removed her her clothes. Not all her clothes, as in like a cape. Cl- yeah, thing. Cape, cape, Sarah, please, cape. <laughs> <laughs> removed her clothes what am i saying um yeah, I, I think that was really cool and i it, mm. it makes sense with the song so i don't think it's something you would wear every day you know what i mean going to the but, shop going to the shop yes well i mean if if she wants to i Imagine. mean i would i would wear obviously. support it um, can but, i buy yeah. some eggs and some milk and you're just like <laughs> in the in 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 the shoulder pad thingy whatever <laughs> yeah i mean obviously i don't think she would wear that to buy groceries <laughs> but but i think for stage it's a tweet okay love it yeah. now we have the winner nemo mm-hmm. guy ever tooth oh i i love the outfit i love yeah. the outfit i think and i think he you know he it it really he, he does justice, you know, to the outfit. It's mm-hmm. it's cool. It's him. I think even through his clothes, he's expressing himself. Right? Yeah, That's the great human being, like on a human level. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Completely agree. Like I know they got a lot of like, I, like a lot of like flack beforehand, of, like for what they were wearing. But yeah, I, I like it. As I said, I said as I said before, like. As long as, in this case, Nemo was comfortable wearing what he was wearing, it's a form of self-expression. Like, why should we distinguish between, you know, like, why should we like determine who should wear a skirt, a dress, whatever? Like, mm-hmm. it's twenty twenty four. I I think there are bigger issues to worry about. There really are. I mean, 
you know, they were great. I'm just they sounded insane. Yeah. So like why why waste energy criticizing? I mean, honestly, I mean everyone is free to have their own opinion, but I really don't I really don't get it. And like the internet and social media mm-hmm. can get really nasty and it's I don't know why. Like if you don't have anything good to say, then just don't say it. Oh, you know right. what I mean? I read something that if you, you're going to say something to someone and that particular person cannot do anything about it in five seconds or so, then just don't say it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's useless. Completely agree. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you can have your opinion and everything, but sometimes people just uh, just go beyond that and the way they express their opinion it's like i don't know it's like they have some divine right to speak in that way and i i just i think nemo are great and they're they're great and they won so yeah they won switzerland next year yeah super nice like you said about the the whole social media thing like it was quite heightened and quite tense this year but i think if we can get a little bit more of that eurovision magic back for next year yeah. Uh, about what it's really about then it'll just make it a bit more calmer so yeah, yeah. But i'm glad that that someone like nemo won because yeah. at least at the end of the day despite all the drama and and because there was drama as you were saying like <laughs> <laughs> too much yeah <laughs> yeah i don't know man like <laughs> there could be a film like a documentary yeah. on it <laughs> 100%, 100%. but yeah despite all the drama i mean love i guess and like equality and a beautiful human being one with a great song and a great voice and a very unique out of the box concept so yes i'm happy and a non-binary person which is something i'm i made a mistake before i said he and i was i i was i was wrong and i that's okay i did it well so yeah because yeah yeah because it's it's just yeah. The, you're so used to saying he or she exactly. but, yeah, but this is now the times new, are changing yeah and we should accept that and we should make sure that we integrate it in, in like our vocabulary and and in our language because they are great and they did great we, um, girl, you are so well spoken like everything oh. you say, it's you could like do speeches for like the un or something you just oh <laughs> that's big <laughs> No, I'm just uh, no. I, I just I, I'm passionate about these. You're a good person. Oh. Yeah, that's Thank it. You. That's what it comes down to. Thank you. Thank you. I tell you. So, we can all be all emotional and sweet, but we have still got a game to play, Beatrice. Ah, so yes, come on. yes, 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 yes. Yes. Okay, we deviated a bit. Listen, Benici, oh, no, to... you're trying to make people, you know, in their emotions. We've not got time for that now. Yes. Moving on. <laughs> Two. Two. Two? Of course. Okay. Do you yes. like drag? Do you like drag race? Yes, that's why. <laughs> ah, I, like, oh, I, like, yeah. I like drag so much, so so much. You... I actually, when I was in London, I performed at Heaven, and uh, you did. Um, yeah. Yes, and I met like Morphine and so many other Morphine Dion. Yes. 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 She actually shared my Eurovision performance. Uh, she's oh. she's insane. She's so sweet. Like. The, the the most humble and sweet person you'll ever meet um so so yes and i i mean i met so many drag queens along the way like through through, through as you it. do like. and i i love i love drag queens oh. i love love drag queens so i will always like say tooth for them whatever they're wearing yeah <laughs> okay, they're which... expressing themselves <laughs> yeah exactly um which one of them interviewed you at the turquoise I think they both. No, oh, no, this one interviewed me. I'm not sure the name. Tea Coffee. Tea or Coffee from the UK. Yes, but I'm not sure if the other one interviewed me too later. Really? I don't know. So I I have like blank moments. Well, it's a toot. But no, definitely <laughs> for sure. And um, our last one is controversial. Queen, Queen, Queen. But two? two? Okay. I like her. Same. Yeah. I don't know. It's she's like through her music and through her style, she can like really express herself. And I, I think it, 
I think like even what she's wearing is a form of self-expression and it's yeah. unique to her, you know? Um, so it's a tooth. I agree. I think like she, as much as I wanted her to get off of that, that seat and come to the front of the stage and just belt tattoo, like I suppose it was her creative direction, you know? Like it's what she wanted to do at the time. So yeah. 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 And sometimes we don't have to, understand i i don't know i don't know how to explain it but uh, um like it's what you see as an artist like yes, whatever exactly, exactly. Whatever following, so. yeah 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 well that was 10 toots and zero boots very yeah. very nice yes, uh. <laughs> no well, but honestly honestly i there wasn't an outfit which i hated no. and i give up boots no oh, oh very kind yeah. but, Cool. But uh, Sarah, if we're going to be honest, <laughs> we could talk to you all night, but we don't have the budget for that. We don't okay. Have the money for Same the here, budget. okay? I have stuff to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> oh, Sarah, thank you so, so much for joining yeah. us. It's been like, a It's been amazing to see your journey to Eurovision and oh. where you're going at the moment. It's just so, so exciting. We wish you every bit the best. best luck. Um, you're incredible. And always believe in yourself because we love yeah. you. Oh, how sweet. Thank you. I, I appreciate and I appreciate your support and the support of so many Eurovision fans because I, I was told before I did Eurovision that Eurovision fans are very loyal and they like they're crazy about Eurovision, but I never expected this huge amount of support and like I don't know, they're Eurovision fans are honestly the best. They're so loyal, and I'm so grateful that I that I have this com I'm part of this community and I, I feel the love every single day, honestly. So I'm 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 very, very grateful for you guys and, and all the Eurovision fans. Yeah. And you're now officially in the Tiffany Club. You're so in the Tiffany Club. Club. <laughs> <laughs> love. Cheers, girl. Cheers. <laughs> Big bottle of water from oh! Water too. Cheers. Oh, cheers. <laughs> right. But thank you so much, guys. And we'll see you soon. Yeah. So Sarah has just left the Tiffy Club. And that means we have two new guests. Chris, who are they? Guys, you won't believe who we've managed to get on the pod. <laughs> <laughs> it's the two Manchester Kings of Radio. Yes. Known for their Eurovision interviews, and they've been busy and booked for Pride all over the country. And you thought that Jed would have been annoying, but these two might be giving them a run for their money. It's I Lewis. agree, Lewis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were talking about you yourself for a minute then about the Jedwood comment. But... <laughs> <laughs> so <are you> guys. <laughs> Yeah, we're good. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for having us on as a as a guest on the brand new pod on your side. This thank is, you very this much. Is weird for us, isn't it? Because obviously we we normally have guests on our podcast, and so like being on another podcast is actually quite fun. We have like, is yeah, it a podcast. What is this? It, it's a series. It's a so thing. Oh, it can be man. whatever you want it to be. Like. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Sounds like they don't know what it's going to be. <laughs> like, what, what, what I want it to be. I want money in my back pocket. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's Tiffany's event. You know, oh. she's pregnant this time, so she, we need funding. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> go fund yeah. me in the bio. Please tell me what Sarah Bonici said when you brought out that. She met her. She was my mascot in Malmo, and she came back on your podcast. <laughs> yes, she did. <laughs> The unicorn, not Sarah Benucci. No, no, no right. no, yeah, but both of them, <laughs> both of them. No, I was... remember meeting Tiffany uh, in Melmo in the media room, and I was like, "What is that? I need mm. that in my life." <laughs> she was quite the icon, to be fair. It was as well. Yeah, so were we. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you are. But let's just take it straight back, right? So you've not joined Gadio. Um, you're looking for work. How did you come across Gadio? And like, who was there first? God, so that would have been me. So when I was working at a little station in Brighton, that's where I'm from originally, I was oh. looking at other radio stations to kind of move on to. And this is before I was, I think, properly out, actually. Uh, and I found a station <laughs> called Gadio. 
Uh, back then, it wasn't as big as it is now. Um, and I just had a little look and I had a little list and I was like, nah, that's not for me, that. Um, <laughs> and then me, I would say, I think it's been about eight years later afterwards, um, Gadio came down to Brighton. We got bigger and better. Uh, and I said, I want to join. And that's how I became as a presenter. And I moved up to Manchester about three years ago uh, to be in our lovely main studios. Uh, and now we are the world's largest LGBTQ plus radio session. Not because of me. World's largest. World's <laughs> last is, yeah, that's what we're saying. I don't want to show off, but yeah. uh, <laughs> it's true. Little plug. Yeah. All <laughs> oh, little snaps. Yeah. Snaps. Um, so <laughs> that is that is me. So I've been here now in Gadio for six years, a radio presenter for 16 years. Uh, mm. So it's been a lot of me talking absolute crap for all that time. <laughs> Love that. I'm and, glad you admitted it. Yeah, and I get to do it on a podcast yeah. for Eurovision as well. So actually, happy days all round. Love it. Oh. And um, nice. I was doing lots of like community radio bits. And then I knew I wanted to... Well, Gadio is uh, based in Manchester and actually Brighton as well. Um, yeah. But we're a national radio station. So I'd, I'd heard of Gadio like before because it's on basically everywhere. Uh, and then I knew I wanted to move up to Manchester. So when I thought, let's let's try and combine this. And it it's worked quite nicely. I'm at Gadio, met Lee. I've been at Gadio how long? About a year. Yeah, it's been a year. It's been it? about a year, and it was about a six months down the line yeah. when we started yeah. talking about um, our podcast, and that's how this one here became one of my uh, well, my bestie at work. Oh, that's, oh. that's sickening. That's what? sickening. Yeah, <clears throat> want, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Um, but yeah, you've been busy and booked over summer. Tell us a bit about the Pride events that you've done. Um, and what's been your favourite moment so far in terms of like interviews and stuff? God, so you haven't been here for most of the prizes here because you've been jetting off around Europe with some client stuff that we're doing. Yeah, um, yeah, we did, just, we did some big stuff for British Airways, which was really fun. So we did a, a bit of travel oh, podcast. <laughs> nice. Honestly, it was amazing. Yeah, so it was called Gator in Europe, uh, not be plugging another podcast. Um, <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and no, it was actually it was so good. I literally, I got to go on holiday and do a podcast like, how fun is that? So um, I missed out on a couple of the prizes, which I was gutted about, especially Brighton, because Girls Aloud were there. And like that is like a dream for me. That was was that good? Were that, you there? That was a moment for that. Yeah. Oh. So I did. Um, so because Gadio, because we're so uh, nationwide, we are one of the big <laughs> main um, sponsors at all the prides, the big ones. So you've got Brighton, uh, London, Birmingham and Manchester, of course. And um, we do some smaller ones as well. So we've always got a media presence in these big prides, whether that be behind backstage or in the parades. Um, and we normally have big clients with us as well. Like in London, it was uh, Warner Music Group. Uh, so they put us on a massive float with a brand new girl band that they were uh, trying to get broken into the industry, which is quite cool. But then we got to meet loads of people across, you know, the whole of these prides. Uh, so Sophie Ellis Bexter, um, who else did we have? God, I can't even bloody think now. They've been incredible. I mean, Lorene's turned up at every pride this year. Love, love which my is girl. great. Um, and talking about her turning up, we have got a guest. Please welcome Lorene. Can you imagine she's walked in? Imagine. imagine. I, I God. Honestly. Do you watch Drag Race, any of you? Yeah, yeah, I do. Do you watch Global? No, no but I've heard it's kicking off a little bit. Yeah, well, one of the Swedish queen just did Louis on Snatch <gasps> Game. Oh, oh I my saw, God. I saw the nails. And she was in the lip sync. Oh, my God, is the that the same one that um, I saw Diana was being on That's Snatch the Game? Same is that the one? same one? That is the same one. Was it? Yeah, oh. yeah. Oh my word, so they had Lorene and they had Diana hanging out together. Yes, they did, because yeah. Katie Scott Claus did that. Oh my God. Yeah, that is so funny. <laughs> and now I'm going to have to watch, because that sounds really happy. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a busy pride season for us yeah. through the summer we don't really stop and especially with Lewis being away I was away on a cruise with another podcast as well for uh, the, another you know, podcast go. <laughs> flog that well. <laughs> you should put a little dinger in the corner how many podcasts <laughs> are Lee and Lewis <laughs> mentioned <laughs> ding, ding, ding. <laughs> <laughs> what would not big headed at all no, no, no not at all, at all. No. Not at all. No. king of the plug us king of the yeah king we are yeah plug. so we got a plug put it in <laughs> <laughs> well, talk about Girls Aloud. Did you see them in the summer on the tour? Yes. So I went with another presenter called Brett and we went to the last night in Liverpool. I bet that was inc like a closing <laughs> show. Because I, I went to the one in Manchester that was, I think, halfway through. When mm. It was phenomenal. I loved the way they like brought in the Sarah Harding tributes. Can't lie, yeah. it was a little bit emotional. Mm. Um, 
it was it was like your childhood, like nostalgia, like a nostalgia tour. And every single yeah. song, there were some songs as well. It was like, how many Girls Aloud songs am I going to know? And I know that sounds silly, but the, I literally knew them all and I couldn't believe it. So what was like the last one like for you, Lee, seeing it in Liverpool? Do you know what? It, I thought it would have been a bigger thing. There's, there was a bit of fireworks. There's a bit more confetti than normal, I would say. I would say I've not seen the others, but it, it was it was nice, actually. And they had some really special words about Sarah at the end and, you know, saying thanks for all the, you know, what's going on and across the whole nation, across the months that they were touring. And then they were talking about, obviously, it's the last one, but you can catch us at Brighton Pride as well at ah. the same time, which uh, I was on the uh, media They're not the, that. We're not the only ones doing a plug. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> not uh, them trying to flog off Brighton Pride tickets. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, no, that, for you. <laughs> um, but Girls Aloud, and then halfway through Girls Aloud, bringing out Oli Alexander, um was oh, inviting, yeah. incredible absolutely what a moment where everybody started screaming and then he came in and sung king he did oh. do his song from eurovision how oh but there we go are you surprised <laughs> no not really i'm gonna be honest with you no <laughs> oh i like i love dizzy i love dizzy I yeah. have, uh, oh. loved it. and the feeling in the arena i can't scroll because i was there for like the actual semi-final one um first ever time i've been in the arena for like an actual uh, live live show before okay um like i've done a rehearsal but the uh, i've not the arena was electric when, it, when he was on and i don't know if it was because it was packed full of british fans or what it was but it was i loved it like it was yeah. such a good atmosphere and i it was underrated that song well i personally but... i think it was like I'm, I'm not being funny when it came out well if it, take it back when he announced that he was going to represent the uk on strictly and that's what i love seeing is that strictly are more and more, I think, delving into the Eurovision scene and mm. like bringing out little hints. Like, there's, is it Danielle who's dancing to Fuego this time? No. Fuego, yeah, I saw that. Montel, yeah, my pick to you. Um, um, do you think like it's this is because more generally, because I think like this is quite a demonstration of like Eurovision getting more accepted just uh, generally in the UK. Like, I've noticed more radio stations talking about Eurovision yeah. and it being, like, a, a cool thing to talk about now. Whereas, like, back in the day, it'd be like, oh, no, you can't talk about that. Don't yeah. talk about Eurovision. You I know think, what I mean? I think ever since uh, Sam and he came second, mm, and it, definitely. Kind of, I think it gave the nation a going, oh, my God, actually, we can do this. If we put our money where the mouth is and we, do, we, we think about what we're going to do, we can actually do very well. And I think when it came to Liverpool... Oh, that yeah. was the moment I knew the whole of the nation kind of near enough switched and went, do you know what? I forgot how amazing this competition was and especially told it on behalf of Ukraine at the same time. It, it was it was a special moment uh, to be a UK fan at that point, I would say. And I think Liverpool like... Was... Yeah, go on, Luke, sorry. Like, all the streets, like obviously I lived near Liverpool, like all the old men and women in Liverpool, I think they were like, let's just be gay for the weekend, might as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I divide with you guys. Good the for whole, them. Yeah, the whole, <laughs> I think whereas in other previous post cities, you'd like not know that Eurovision was happening in the rest mm. of the city. Liverpool embraced it. It's and, true. and yeah. But I don't I don't want to plug our podcast. Do it, girl. But but <laughs> I, I will big up one episode because we had the ball uh, like such a ball, didn't we? We had um the executive producer of Eurovision 2025 on. It was like Ooh. a little special episode. And um, no, I, the reason I wanted to talk about it, um, apart from the plug, is because what, what we were just talking about, there was a reason I was plugging. Host City. Host City. City. No, you, know, yeah. no, you were talking uh, about Liverpool. So, forget, forget where you plug in. Yeah, <laughs> so sorry. Anyway, I thought I'd just mention that. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, oh, dang. He was mentioning about the fact that like we were asking him what Eurovision like inspires him. And he was talking about like how he wants to draw so much from Liverpool like we didn't even I don't think we even mentioned Liverpool until he talked about that and he was just saying the exact same thing you just said there like about um the way the city felt but not only the city like the whole country like just felt so you know like when the, we had the Olympics in 2012 that like nostalgic like feeling yeah. you get from that year yeah. it, for, I think Liverpool feels a little bit like that because of the way the whole country felt like about Eurovision so well I hope that like he said um Basel's gonna be a little bit like that <gasps> I can't wait. I've Honestly. got my fingers crossed. It looks stunning, doesn't it, as like a, a city? Will you both be there? 
Yeah, go on. Um, we haven't booked our... Really? I, I haven't booked my tickets. I don't know if you are. I haven't booked, but, well, but nothing's been booked as of yet. So, obviously, when we were there last year, we were sponsored by uh, EasyJet, which is really nice. So, they were obviously the official airline sponsor last year. I think they are next year as well. Um, and we've got some contacts going somewhere to make sure that the stuff that we're doing ready for next year, uh, which is... We'll get you there. Which is uh, at the moment behind my mouth and trying not to come out of what we're trying to say. Um, <laughs> we'll get, we'll come in towards that with the stuff we're doing in 2025. So hopefully you will be seeing both of us. I, I think like part. there might be a reason why we just go anyway, though. Like, yeah. Um, even if Gadio don't want to send us there, we'll we'll be up. Gadio will want to send us there. We're good fun. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> 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 All right, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Shall I? How do I do it? I'll kick you out. <laughs> uh, echo that though, because I think before Malmo, me and Luke especially, we were like. We're going to Eurovision, but we had no idea about press or the media centre or anything. So it was like a, a last minute thing, as press usually is. Um, but to be there and like be in that press centre and then like make all the connections that you do, it's just like, it's just good fun. It's, it's, good really, fun. it's really special as well, because I walked in there not knowing anybody except for, I think, Chris Yu um, yeah. and Andy. Uh, and that was it. But by the end of the week, when I had to leave early on the Friday before mm. all the uh, use line stuff started kicking off, what a moment <laughs> for me to what a moment for me to leave. By the way, you were like, time um, to go. I, I, was, I, I was like, I'm off. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I was getting messages from you. I was getting messages around you going, you have left at the wrong time. I was like, I'm literally about to board a plane. Um, but being in that at the end of the week and being on that massive table that we we're on. Oh, and saying goodbye to everybody. I was actually feeling a bit more emotional because I spent a whole week with you guys and doing all this fun stuff. And then I had to go and say goodbye. And I was like, I don't want to really. I want to stay here. So you made yeah. so many friends. It of- felt like an eviction on Big Brother, didn't it? It, it? it really did. It felt like I was the first one out. And I don't know what I did to do that, to be <laughs> honest with you. I um I only came in for one one off. It was like a one-off morning because we were recording a podcast episode. And I was in, um, I was in Malmo anyway, just for myself because i love eurovision guys you wanted to no, really <laughs> no i don't know if i've mentioned it before but i really do <laughs> all right and um no so i was there anyway and that was like booked way before i even joined gadio and then um i thought well we'll link this in manage to get press and then yeah I mean, it is such a cool experience isn't it because this is a show that we've all like grown up with we've all like really got into and then being almost like behind the scenes is such a weird but rewarding experience and then seeing the artists just walk around absolutely everywhere yeah. by themselves, you look back and I'm like, oh my God, it's Isaac. Oh my God, it's Bambi yeah. Fug. <laughs> so what the hell is going on? Mate, I remember Nutzer walking in the press centre and then this guy just did her, her dance bop in front of her. Oh. And That was me? Yeah, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> I, I knew it, yeah. <laughs> but like, yeah, it's just crazy. I remember that first day I was just like on a cloud. I was like... <gasps> What am I doing? And I was like, no, you deserve to be here. What a strut, strut. I yeah, like, you've got you've got to really own in that place. Get your card, scan it in, and yeah. then literally walk in there like you are an artist and doing yeah. all your best. Like seeing even Scott, I spoke to Scott Mills uh, when he was sitting down in the press pit with his gang. Um, and I had a good like five, 10 minute chat with him as well, which is really nice. Like seeing people like that and Ryland come through as well. It's, it, you kind of see on a grand scale how big that is. Um, and well, like considering their, um, you know, the second most popular Eurovision presenting mm-hmm. duo in the UK, apart from us, like they're still really down to earth. <laughs> Who voted for that? I want to see the results. <laughs> <laughs> we went through the national finals and everything. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there's nothing like press, and yeah, hopefully we'll all be there next year. Yes. Was, Fingers crossed. Was that a moment for you to? I'm going to say this to Lee because Lewis, I know you're not like you are sort of famous, but you're not that famous enough. You know, you didn't make an appearance once when I was in press. I thought you had your own bodyguard, like some other delegations. What, what's um, the what, what bloody hell's going on here, please? <laughs> You've invited me on here. <laughs> no, Lee. Where's that what was your... 
<laughs> yeah. What was your favorite press moment? Like, was there something iconic that happened? And you were like, oh my God. It was the moment. So we were in um, talks, because um, obviously we do, obviously we're a radio station, so we deal a lot with uh, music labels and PR mm. artists and all the rest of it. And I remember the night before, it was Wednesday night, and I got a message from my big boss here at the radio going, um, you need to be by your phone in about two minutes' time, just to let you know. I was like, oh, okay. Um, and he phoned me and he was like, right, we have got you, Lorene, tomorrow. So you have to, so you got Scooch in the morning because they're with EasyJet. So camp. I had to, camp, that's camp enough. Yeah. I, had to, I, had to learn, I had to learn the dance. And then I had to literally leg it over to uh, Denmark where she was staying in this like five-star hotel. And then Ooh. the PR person come and pick me up. It's like, you, Lee? Yeah, it was like, let's take you up there. Right, you've got... 10 minutes with her. I was like, fine. He was like, I'm going to give you five minutes to set up also. So I'll come back in in about five minutes. As soon as I got all the camera up, I was ready. I was standing there. I was like, Christ, I'm about to meet the queen of Eurovision, you mm -hmm. know, two-time winner, Lorene. Mm -hmm. And then he came in and he was like, um, okay, are you ready? And before he said ready, she came in through the door and went, <laughs> like that, with these massive nails and I just looked at her and this moment I was like this is going to be fun this is going to be so so good and she was an absolute dream um, I showed her the video which went viral on our side of me doing Lorene the year before and doing a tattoo on a desk outside a Gadio with oh. Gadio neon lights and me trying to lift it um, which she loved and then we had about 25 minutes in the end which is quite nice she so, stole your muff she stole my muff as well so at the end of our mics, yeah, she stole my muff. So, oh, uh, on the camera and microphone, on the I bet, microphone, I bet microphone, people yeah. didn't expect four gays to be talking about a muff. <laughs> hey. <laughs> In our room. So, yeah, uh, so halfway through the interview, she was like, Oh, I like there's plenty of this muff. She's like, I really like this. And I was like, Oh, I can let oh, I wish I can let you keep it. Do you want me to send you one? She was like, Yes, send me one. And at the end of the interview, I was like, What other chance will I ever give Lorene a muff? Uh, and uh, at the end, I was like, do you know what? You keep that. She was like, you sure? I was like, yeah. She's like, I'm going to put this in my house. So she's got oh. some old, dirty Gadio muff that probably about 18 <laughs> presenters. Yeah. Please don't, don't talk about me like that. <laughs> 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 she's probably got this 18-year-old muff that's been spat on by all these gays and nays over oh. the years just sitting in her house somewhere. So that's quite a big, good moment right. for me. Good oh. for her. Would you say that's <laughs> one of your favourite interviews that you've done or is there any, like, other... Oh. Yeah, out. that was good. Marcus and Martinez, we did. That oh, was really we did good. together at London Eurovision that Party. That was really fun. Yeah. That, were... that for me was like, uh, you know, like when you, the moment, I think you said the same with Lorene when, when she came in, you just feel the aura straight away. Mm. If it's going to be a good interview, they don't even have to say anything. You just know, is this going to be a good interview or not? Um, so they, they were good fun, I thought. They were really good. And that really, they, they, were op they were really open. Like they, they talk about, anything you wanted to like yeah. they, they made a joke about um sweden hosting eurovision twice if they won and like that's the sort of thing i think other artists would be a bit scared about like joking yeah. about or like mm. do you know what i mean talking yeah. about but they were just like really up for a laugh and i just i love that in an interview and swearing yeah. as well like they're really so, like those kind of bits you're like oh can we yeah, yeah. I was like yeah don't worry we'll bleep it it's absolutely fine mm -hmm. um so some of those like those interviews like isaac was just a just a happy happy person just to have a laugh with um, Bambi was great. Ollie, we did before we flew out to Malmo. Um, I mean, what, what? It's a crazy list. Luke, I didn't see anything from you because it didn't seem to turn up on socials or anything. But um, <laughs> did you? Did you? <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure that you want us on this podcast? Because I feel like we're just Hattie, Hattie. Meow. It's gays for you. Club is all about. <laughs> that's now, like the, as long as you know we're only joking we love a laugh that's the no, main thing no, no I'm, it got I'm to not... the Go it got to the point where i was impressed and i was doing what was i doing a thumbnail for an interview and like after five minutes i went to vince i was like can you just do it for me <laughs> <laughs> oh, vince. oh vince oh vince oh vince oh he's vince. dead at the minute i don't know oh, where okay. he is <laughs> okay. so, he's doing r and r he will be here in a, somewhere in the next episode. Um, but yeah, no, I've got to say, as much as we're ripping the shit out of each other, I've got to say that, as I said earlier, you two are the first people that I saw mm. in London pre-party at that press event. And that was my first ever interview of anybody ever. Mm -hmm. And I was like, shitting myself. The night before, I'd been out to see two of my friends. Uh, it was out till 5am. 
Um, oh, I forgot about the hunger, the hangover shakes. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. over to shit. Turned up, went on the tube, was sweating like a like a whatever you know, want to call it. And then I got to the press event, and I was like, "Why? Well, we're gonna have to fucking <laughs> just go with it here." And then, like, you looked nearly as messy as Luke does right now to put into perspective. <laughs> <laughs> I feel yeah. weird because <laughs> I don't have my glasses on and everyone says I look like Alan Carr. No, so, no, you don't at all. Luke, I'm joking. I love you. Mate, but you I don't love you, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> but you no, I'm joking. Like you both did oh, so right. well, like, you know, you're talking about you having the hangover, but actually, by the time you picked up a mic and literally started going for it, you would literally smash them out. You just came into your own, party. though, you didn't really you, did. Mm. really did. That was the first day I was like, yeah, this is what I want to do. Yeah, yeah you just oh, know, yeah. don't you? You just know. Yeah. So, yeah. And see some of your videos, because I did see, I, I've got to admit, I did see some of your videos as well, just where you went around, because I know you met some of the artists in other places, other hotels and stuff. You just did so well um all round it was it was lovely to see and to bring uh tiffany along to all those moments as well of course absolutely like i say i think before malmo yeah, yeah. queen yeah. <laughs> no that's a belly fuck no oh. i didn't know what she was up to <laughs> she was excited to see us today. <laughs> people normally are did you hear that people normally are excited to see us luke <laughs> you should try that one time being nice to us <laughs> Well, I've seen you not long ago. Yeah, like, that's true, right? actually. That's true. July. Yeah, that's true, actually. We could be a bit more catty. Exactly. We love it. We love it. But no, yeah, yeah. It, it was a great experience all round. Absolutely loved it. And love meeting you guys. Honestly, it really did make yeah. that, that whole experience just, uh, just a whole lot better, oh. I would say. Because yeah. I felt like in the press or like outside the press, a little group was forming mm. and it was really cute. Yeah. So and it was, it was the way like, you know, there was so much contention about everything that was going on politically for this year for Eurovision. But it was the moments where we would watch the live semifinals and the whole of that press room, you know, podcasters, journalists, radio presenters, whatever, for certain songs would get up in the middle of a massive circle and start doing the dance moves or start oh. singing together. And it, I always kind of looked away and I was like, this is what, uh, sounds really this cheesy, this about. is what Eurovision is all about, actually, yeah. bringing everybody together. And that was a, a proper moment, I would say, for me as well. A hundred percent. So where mm. were you, um, Lewis? Did you go to the village or did you watch it? So I came up for like a few days. I did... Um, romantic trip for Eurovision. Romantic boy. trip with uh, with the boyfriend. Um, I've like dragged him into Eurovision oh. over the last couple of years, <laughs> but he loves it now. Like he's he's just as obsessed with me. To the fact, like he was like, oh, "Have you heard all the songs yet?" One like uh, at the start of like last year, if that makes sense, when all the songs were coming out, and I hadn't even heard all the songs yet. And he was like, oh, "I really like this. I really like that." And I was like, "Wow, okay." <laughs> um, but yeah, we were away, and then um, I saw you for a bit, Lee, didn't I? On on the Tuesday, and I stayed in Malmo yes. too because I was based in Copenhagen for those like three days. Um, on Tuesday I, evening, I then went to the semi-final one, uh, mm -hmm. which was which was the one with uh, Petra's grinder joke, which was absolutely hilarious. Oh my god! Remember, like seeing that live, the moment I saw that, I was like, "This is gonna like blow up on socials," and it did. Like you, was she she was great. But um, yeah, so it was just like it was literally a solely a Eurovision trip just to go for the fun of it. Um, but the luck of like you know I joined Gadio a couple of months before and um, could link it in with with that and mm. our podcast that we set up it was just it was a dreamy few days actually it was, it really was. Nice. and actually yeah. doing that one of the podcast episodes from the press room um it with, was mad with which i didn't know so after because i didn't read the rules properly you're not supposed to have wireless mics and i brought the wireless mics for that whole thing it's not until scooch's management said to me oh you got an interview but you can't use those but do you know what we'll look away for this and i was like oh Oh, I didn't oh. know. And I looked down and I was like, I looked at the sheet. I was like, oh, he can't use wireless mics. Oops, my uh, bad. Sorry. It is quite a long list. That, uh, it's a lot of rules. Like, I remember us being all in there for the uh, semis and stuff like that uh, mm. for the rehearsals. And nobody knew how much time you can put on your own social media per yes. performance. Going Everybody the, was running the, around. Is it 10 seconds? Is it 10 yeah, we were like, is it 10? Is it 20? And you got to credit SVT, the EBU. They, and I was like, I didn't even know any of this because I didn't read anything at all before I left, which is really, really bad for me, actually. That's crazy. <laughs> about, like all those little rules. Mm. Around but no, I think doing that podcast episode with you and then bringing Andy in for that as well was really nice for that morning uh, and getting to show you around as I think it was somebody's birthday. 
one of the artist's birthday because we could hear Spanish singing on happy birthday. Oh, yeah, in the background. Oh, happy birthday! Like <laughs> <laughs> it was gorge. But uh, should we play a little game? Yeah. Well, we'll for a we game. love a game. We, love, we do love a game. Love What's your favourite game to play? Uh, Slagging you off. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be inviting you back. <laughs> we're, not, we're not coming back for episode two or three. Or four, I don't know if we'll have two. enough budget for episode yeah, two. Yeah, I, well, I was, I was thinking that. <laughs> well, You're so bitchy. Honestly, <laughs> I don't know what's going. On. I'm not lonely like this. I, just, I, I genuinely don't know what's going on. I think it's. I don't know what's going on. You did, I had a really good night's sleep last night. I think that's what's happened. I had like nine hours and i don't normally have that long and i think this is actually a recipe for disaster and he's just, just had a curry as well before he got on here so what, just spicing yeah. up what curry i don't know why the curry is <laughs> you know why you mentioned that but was it a korma? um uh, what, what was it sorry was it a korma uh no it was the, it was just like a i made the curry it was like a homemade curry set like oh uh, homemade. it's like a golden oh, ramsay yeah. over here yeah, yeah. i know yeah. Oh, yeah housewife yeah exactly yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> We'll have to come round. You'll have to cook us a curry. Yeah. You bring the wine. I no and the curry, and I'll cook it. <laughs> I'll bring the entertainment. I'll ben. find someone in the contest. The oh, entertainment would just be us, me and Luke, just cu- coming for each other. Yeah. Yeah. Come dine with me. Get yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. We should do that. We <laughs> should do a come dine. Come dine with me. Oh my god. Oh my god. god. Happen. Congratulations, Lewis. You've won the money. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Imagine me and Luke just like. <laughs> <laughs> you know when you have to give the scores yeah. one one yeah. <laughs> I really liked his food and his attitude however I didn't like the rest of it right so we're supposed to be playing another game <laughs> sorry another game. we know you two are joined at the hip um, for Lee's birthday Lewis you said he is your uh, hubby your radio hubby so yeah. we thought, what not better than to play Mr and Mr oh! <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I love this. Then you're just going to DM whoever asks the question. You're going to DM your answer to them. So I'm okay. going to say the first question, and you're going to DM your answers to me. And I'm going to. And if it's a match, you get a point. If it's not a match, then you don't get a point. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Question number one. <laughs> <laughs> not the quiz voice. <laughs> <laughs> Who was Lewis's winner? of Eurovision 2024, like personal favourite. So I'm revealing that my winner, I think, would have been Ukraine. Oh, it's oh. Not... Oh. Lee put it was Nemo. So... Oh. You did really like Nemo I as well. Like you Nemo. did. And I remember you when you stood up because we were watching it together, you were screaming. I was. But I think <laughs> he liked Nemo, Nemo more. My, my boyfriend was like full like Switzerland. Like that was... Maybe it could be me and him, Mr. Mr. Yeah, maybe. (laughs) Maybe you've got the wrong partnership. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So now... God. Who was Lee's last place of 2024? So, who is your last place, Lee? Uh, My last place would have been Azerbaijan. Oh, I like that song. And Ilkin. I know it wasn't about me, but... (laughs) 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 What did you put? What did you put, Lewis? I put Moldova. I, really, I thought you didn't. No, I quite liked you her. You like her violin. <laughs> that one. And I think that was quite good of me, actually. I wish she brought the girls on stage with her from the national final. I thought they were. I know. She needed some backing dancers, girl. Get a grip. Yeah. yeah. I love the painted toner in the hair. Do you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. <laughs> Bring her back for a third. But I don't think she'll do it again after this, is she? You never <laughs> know. You never know. <laughs> right, next question. Question three. Who is Lewis's favourite interview of all time? Doesn't have to be Eurovision, can be God, what's UK my Euro interviews. God. Christ. Pressure. What is my favourite interview? Can you have to give me a chance to think about what my favourite interview was like? <laughs> the issue is I don't think you know that I've interviewed this person. Oh. Oh, that doesn't help. That's a good start. That's a really good start. Um Can I can I give a clue? <laughs> yeah. My clue is they're a really good interview. That doesn't help at all. No, 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 no. Like, as in, no, I can't give any more clues. I don't want to, like, give it away. Can I ask a sub clue? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) Was it before Gadio? Yeah. 
But there is a Gadio connection. Oh. Oh. oh, we got your answers ready. Yeah. Oh, no, I haven't. Oh, I don't know. I've got no clue. Your time's up. My <laughs> favorite interview was Danny Beard. Oh, I would. Danny Beard. Danny yeah. Beard. Well, Lee so, go on. Rylan. I haven't interviewed Ryan. Oh, I then. thought you did. No, no, I wish I had. God. So um, uh, I interviewed Danny Beard at the first Gadio Pride Awards for the man. Yeah, you did. And it was so oh, funny. Oh, I see we need but mean He gave me catwalk tips. Oh, uh, Christ. He gave me like, <laughs> he was like, oh, I'll give you VIP access to Drag Race Tour. Oh, oh he was so nice. Great. Don't like this game. <laughs> <laughs> Don't like games. But opposites but, attract. You know what this is about? This is us getting to know each other. Exactly. Yeah. It feels like we're in a counseling yeah, after yeah, us yeah, doing yeah, yeah, a, a say, series one of a podcast. It together. feels like this is a counseling session about our relationship. Oh, yeah. We need to learn more yeah. about each other. Who so, is so. Lee's your vision crush of all time? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I want to say, my guys, like, because it's not a Eurovision um, singer. Oh. Uh, no, I know you mean. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, um, you're in crush of all time. Yeah. Oh my god! Wait there. What's Lee's Eurovision crush? Bloody hell! Um, Come on, there's a lot of them. There are. That's what I mean. But I can't remember their names. No offense. Oh no! Like you, what you expect me to remember? Forty-eight names from each year. Yeah. The important ones. Yeah, the fit. Yeah. <laughs> I remember their faces, not their names. Oh my god. <laughs> it was. Um... No, I know who it is. I know who it is. And we better get this right, and I'll be fuming if he does not put this person down. Okay. I'm going to say Luca Honey. Lewis? I put baby lasagna. You was obsessed by him. Oh. Oh, yeah, actually, yeah. Oh! I forgot about baby this year. I've just gone back I am, to years. I am fuming right now. In my head in was fact, also Mons in my head at the same time. Really? Yeah. Luca Honey. Luca Luca Honey. Come on, Luca Honey. What's Luca that? Honey. Oh, I want oh, him as a ben, host. Ben, Benjamin, Benjamin, Benjamin Grosso. Benjamin Grosso. Benjamin Grosso. Sorry. Again, really? Yeah. 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 Old Benjamin Grosso. Yeah. Even new Benjamin Grosso with the long hair. Christ. No, not the new one. Old oh, yes. God, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, anyway, thanks a lot, Lee. It's a pleasure. It's flopping hard. Um, this is a really hard quiz, actually. Not when he sees Luca. <laughs> <laughs> right. Next question, boys. We got, in Lewis's opinion, who had the big? Oh, I love this question. Oh, in Lewis's opinion, who had the biggest fashion car crash? Of 2024. What, like, can you, can you say the Eurovision? You say? Has it got to be on stage? Is this Eurovision? Yeah, on stage. On stage. Oh. So, like, yeah, just like a biggest flop. Well, no, it's not Ukraine now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. I'm trying to think. Who this, I is feel... good. this is a good relationship test. This is actually. Real quick. Um, oh. Because I'm thinking about staging at the same time. Mm. We're not, are we not talking about staging? Though, yeah, I know. So let's talk about the outfits that happened during it. So, um, okay, I am gonna go with. I don't even know who for this year. I don't think anyone did. Anyone stand out this like? Okay. In terms of bad outfits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, that was me being genuine. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. No, I genuinely don't know. Who did I not think was? <gasps> no, I know. I know. Hey, Lee said Megara, San Marino, or Luna Poland. <laughs> not the tower. The tower. Um, <laughs> so, my answer was um, I really should have given my answer first, but anyway, it wasn't that. It was uh, Musty. Is it Musty? Oh, really? leave, oh. leave that man alone. He went through a hard time. <laughs> Did you not I, like, I, the tea? like the the underbit? I just 
think it was a really good song and they and unless he picked it i don't i don't know i just feel like it it was it could have been elevated more because i think his vocals are really good and i think the song was really good yeah so until the party is over, over till the party is over yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> yeah i think that was but i that was really difficult because i actually didn't i couldn't have any but if Magara I said to you, Magara, no, I don't. I think Magara looked like punk rock. They played the part. Mm, yeah. Or the so then I thought about the tower, and I thought the tower was. But I, this is the issue. I think in my head, and this is probably like a gay thing. I think some of the what people say is the bad outfits are like iconic. Mm. Yeah. So like for example, a lot of people would be like, "God, what is Sam Smith wearing at the Brits?" Where I'm like, "Slay Queen, love that." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but do you know what I mean? Like, I genuinely think it's brilliant, and I'm like, this is. Yeah. I don't know, like maybe let them me. do down exactly, and I, I think that want. that for me is fashion because I'm like that is you, like you're doing that because you want to do it, and I think that's brilliant. Can I quickly apologise to Megara and Luna as well? You are lovely people. That's just my own opinion. Fucking so, hell, you went from Miss Bonici, who's congenial, and now we're going to you. <laughs> We don't want any more congeniality for <laughs> This is the perfect balance for our first guests. Okay? I was going to say, yeah, this is chaos. Chaos. Yeah. Well, well, right. Thanks. Right, moving on. If Lee was the HOD of any country but not the UK, what? who would it be? Head of mm. delegation. Thank you. Oh, sorry, guys. I feel like <laughs> I know. <laughs> How do you know? What, what do you know about me? What do you know? I, are we basing <laughs> this off someone's personality? Because I am. Yeah, like I would want to be the HOD for like Spain or Cyprus or Greece. Yeah, like, my vibes. Yeah, yeah. What would yours be, Lewis? Um, I'm going to say France, really, or Italy. Ooh. Italy go quite rocky and I don't think I'm knowledgeable enough on rock music although I love I do like rock music I just don't think I'm knowledgeable enough mm. I'd go for like who normally said like a <gasps> Sweden yeah I said I'd be like Sweden because I'm like a bit of a pop bop girly yeah you know? but like mm. pop bop as in like a pop dance like a, a Mark mm. Martinez, for example love that song. you're yeah. obsessed so, with them aren't you absolutely obsessed I just think like it was such a good song mm. She's on the <laughs> and like whenever I hear it, I'm doing the routine. So yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got two, but I'll have to choose one tonight. So I'm going to go with Spain. Oh, did I? I need, do I need to message it to you? Oh, just <laughs> tell us. <laughs> uh, I put Cyprus. Oh! oh, oh my god, I would do Cyprus. You would. I don't even know myself anymore. Oh. I know you better than you know yourself. And yeah. That's what a relationship should be. Yeah. There we go. Second to last question. Thank God. <laughs> if Lewis said could to forget a Eurovision performance, who would it be? <laughs> if Lewis could. Yeah, forget a Eurovision. What, this year? Yeah, let's make it easy. Hmm. <laughs> Mm, homie. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I feel like this. God, can't forget. Oh, God. Sorry, can we go back as well to Sylvester Bout for fittest as well? I forgot about Sylvester. Really? <gasps> mm. Mm. <laughs> the choice of Arne Twink of Eurovision. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, I um, feel that. I, I think I know. I think I know who, but it's an element of the performance. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I know that's like cop out, but no, cop right. right. Who did you think it was? I want to forget the CGI. Like, were they dragons or lions from Luxembourg's performance? <laughs> no, oh! I uh, okay. I loved that performance. I was literally singing at the top of my lungs on uh, when I was there. And then, like, obviously, so I didn't see the CGI dragons. And then, like, I'm watching the, I'm watching back on the TV, like, the day after, because I thought, oh, it would be nice to see what it actually looked like on the TV. Mm -hmm. Am I in it as well? I was like, oh, my God, am I in the crowd? Uh, I wasn't, uh, which is oh. offensive. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, SVT. And uh, anyway, yeah, and I was like, oh, hello. Yeah. 
I'm going to be honest with you, I completely forgot about it. It's like, you know what, the year before when uh, the Poland had all the little CGI effects. Oh, yeah. I, I, I It's funny, but like, I kind of want to forget them. It was like that, like, lava mountain as well at the beginning of it. I was like, just a bit. What's going on? Yeah. yeah. She. Talked... I loved the The song was great, though. Uh, yeah. Sorry, my curry's, my curry's giving me indigestion. It's okay, oh, sweetie. Just... Have a Rennie. Mm. <laughs> You'll need a Rennie after all that wine you've. <laughs> it's just, it's just oh, a glass. So the last Lee, question. No, Lee is, I haven't revealed what Lee said. I mean, <laughs> oh, you guys need to work on this. You're like, <laughs> listen, it's, we're in the teething. There's teething problems. Okay, well, yeah, we can tell. <laughs> Our game was good for Bonichi. I just think we cared about her more. <laughs> <laughs> right lee said controversial mm. london eva armenia oh, that one uh, I, I love, love that one it's not what you said to me what <laughs> we're bit... we were in bed that time and we were sleeping you said to me you're like don't like armenia that is, that is not really sleep. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, that, please reveal that's not true. It's not true, actually. Like, that yeah. is not true. <laughs> just sort of thing. Um, no, I loved it. I was dancing around. I was in um, in Sam's living room dancing around. Who's Sam? This is awkward. The boyfriend, is it? This is going well, isn't it? This Mr. or Mr. We're going to break up. Oh. <laughs> Um, no, I, I love that one, so you are totally wrong. Yeah, Corey. okay, sorry, I'm fine. It's fine. Wow. We're learning a lot about each other in this, uh, this game. We are, actually, wait. Who would Lee want to represent the UK next year? Like, let's say it can be anyone. Anyone. Mm, I know. Come on, let's finish on a anybody, high. Anybody in the whole world, yeah? Oh, fuck. No, they have to be British. You can. Oh, they have to be British. You can change that then. Oh no, was it a British person? It was. Oh, that's why right. I was worried where you were going there. Oh, okay, right, okay. Uh, Use my French as well. I don't normally swear. Let me have it. I'm just getting really oh. frustrated by the. Okay, oui, oui. Oh, we oui, we. Oui. Um, <laughs> I just got really frustrated then. Did you? Oh. Oh, yeah, because this we you please get this right. Come on, end with a point. Thing is, oh no, I've done this as like a jokey. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm oh, gonna no. do another. Like, no, don't put it as a jokey. No, it would be a jokey. All right, yeah. all right, all right, all right, all right. Yeah. Is it a jokey one? A little bit, yeah. Fuck off, I've oh, just seen your answer. Is it? Right, go on. Do a leaper. Oh. <laughs> Why is that a joke? No, I said not a jokey one. It is a jokey one. Yeah, that's what I said. Don't put a jokey one. Oh. Well, what did you put oh. down? I uh, put Ryan really far. I put Ryan down. Oh, because we were talking about that the other week yeah. as well. Oh. Yeah, we were. Oh. We were talking about that the other week. So, funny enough, that should have been your answer. Oh, I thought it wasn't a jokey one. Um, honestly, sorry, Riley, you're not a joke. It wasn't a joke, but like a lot of people would be like, "Oh, haha, Ryland's doing it." Oh no, I want to win. I think Ryland should do it. I think it'd be. Hell oh yeah, I that think I think be it'd be hilariously great. brilliant. Yeah, I think it'd be really, really good. Yeah. However, yeah, no, I do. Do a leaper. Do a leaper. I mean, that would be brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Absolutely. well, I've learned a lot about Lewis today. Well, you both got no points. <laughs> Not good. But we're going to award you one anyway because you've been such fab guests. Uh, you win, always win us in our eyes. Uh, to be now. honest, your yeah. time is up now in the Tiffy Club. Oh, yeah. do you know what? It's been an absolute pleasure, actually. It's I've had been a really, really good fun. time. Yeah, I had a really good time with this. Uh, it's good to catch up, as always. Thanks, Tiff. Thanks, Tiff. Yeah, yeah. what? Uh, <laughs> she said Lee could come back any time. Uh, <laughs> it looks, it, do you know what? It looks totally normal, you talking to a stuffed animal. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, you can tell I'm delusional. <laughs> uh, guys, it's been a pleasure to have you with us. Have you got any final promo you wanted to? If you haven't put it out? <laughs> I, think, I think we've done plenty of that. <laughs> <laughs> One last time together. Right. You imagine. Go on, Lewis. Go on, take this. Well, you know how to find us. You find us everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, um, you. Uh, we do a podcast called Eurovish Huns, and it's like this, but better um, <laughs> by a lot. 
So that's probably the best way of describing it. You can get it on the free to download Gadio oh. app. Uh, you can get it at gadio.co.uk and um, wherever you get your podcasts. Spotify, Amazon, Apple. So stop wasting your time here and get over to us. Yeah. Uh, well. <coughs> Cutting that out. Uh... <laughs> we love you so much no we actually love you and that has actually been so hasn't it been it's been so it's been so much fun thank you so much and we love it yeah we love we we love you too as well thank you so much for letting us come in and be some chaos for the first episode it's been a pleasure can we come back at some point yeah can we come back or we really now pass that line when we've got our shit together of course you can Oh. Excuse me, I did have my shit together, Chris. Oh. Speak for yourself, honey, Barney. I'd like to see a Mr. and Mr. with you, too. <laughs> the Tiffy oh. Club is closed, but guys, thank you so much for being on. Um, you will always be amongst our first guests in the first episode, so thanks so much. Yeah. And- oh, yeah. First and last guest? Yeah. 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 <laughs> and we can't wait for the 2025 season and everything coming up. So, yeah, that was a crazy and chaotic opening launch. Piffy Talks is here to stay. It's here to stay, let me tell you. And guys, I thank you so much. Um, we absolutely loved having Sarah Bonici and Leon Lewis from Gadio on the pod today for our first episode. And they were feeling good. They were. Um, and yeah, guys, we can't wait to see who we will have next. So stay tuned. Guys, you can find me at Chris Calling on YouTube. Chris underscore calling official on Instagram and Chris.calling on TikTok. And you can find me on YouTube at Luke Reacts underscore 20. Instagram, Lou Griffiths underscore 20. And TikTok, UK memes, the number four, you guys we hope you enjoyed this first episode of tiffany talks and we can't wait to see you next time don't forget to like and subscribe and comment and, and all, all of, of that, that jazz. Jazz. Uh, see you next time guys bye guys bye.